happy Valentine's Day, guys. So, if you guys saw my end of the year message, not video that I posted, I basically alluded to the fact that I was kind of done with Own It Never Falking Seen It. It wasn't really going to be a thing anymore, and I do stick by that. It's not that I don't want to do them, I just simply do not have the time, and they just take up, you know, they, they really, like, crowd the schedule and things like that, so I just unfortunately did not have the time. But that being said, there is one that I've wanted to review for the longest time, and, you know, it's it's a series that I've had for about over two years now. I've, uh, come, you know, I've contemplated whether or not I would uh, review it. I've been toying with that idea pretty much since I bought this trilogy with the intent of reviewing them on Valentine's Day. Um, I was going to do it last year. It just didn't fall through, but I figured, you know what? I've put this off for way too long. I've heard so many people praise these films. I think I'm finally going to take a look at them, and I did. And so, finally, on Valentine's Day in 2020, when really thinking about, is there like a special film that I can review? Because I don't usually do things like this, but I feel like I want to do more things like this, for sure. Um... And to be honest, I don't really think there was a better trilogy for me to pick than the Before trilogy. Uh, this is a series that, again, I've got numerous requests to review. I have heard so much praise about it, and I was just very excited to take a look at these. Not just because of my already pretty big love for Richard Linklater, who I, I really do think he is a great director, despite the fact that he really has not been very good lately at all. Um, when he's amazing, he truly is one of the best out there, and so that definitely had me excited, but then just coupled with all the praise it was getting and things like that, and so I took a look at it, and I very quickly fell in love with this trilogy. Before trilogy for me is not just a great exploration of love, but it's just a great exploration of humanity and how much we change throughout our lives and the passage of time and things like that and certain choices we made. There's just, there's so much I love about this series overall. Now, because I'm reviewing a trilogy of films, this review is going to be structured a bit differently because I'll just say right now, I love all three of these films. So I'm not going to review each of them individually. I'm going to talk about why I love it a lot. It is going to be a lot of gushing. And, you know, you guys might be annoyed by that. But trust me, I really do love these films a lot. And if you want individual reviews, just go on my letterbox. I'll post them in the description of this video where I reviewed each of them individually. Because honestly, if I were to say something individually, I'd basically be regurgitating a lot of the same thoughts I have towards this series. There are things I'll bring up that these films do differently that I love and why I love them so much um, on their own, um, but it's mainly going to concern the trilogy overall, and I don't think there's any better way to start off with this trilogy because there really is so much to talk about here without talking about its two main leads because when you have a series like this, which without really getting into much, if you guys don't know what these films are about, there's not really a lot going on plot-wise. It's quite literally that we have two characters that meet one day on this bus. Um, they both are in uh, Paris for various reasons that I'm not going to get into because you really should watch the movie to find that out because it's so much more interesting not knowing why um, and finding out why makes it so much more thematically interesting for sure. Um, but basically, you know, these two meet on this bus one day and from there they start to have these seemingly very random conversations but they start to form a very solid connection and basically the next the rest of this series is exploring them trying to maintain that connection make sure they can keep it but also you know take a look more into their personal lives their philosophies what makes them take the different paths that they've set themselves on and just really get a look into who these two really are so that's quite literally all this series really is and for a series like this you need actors that really can carry it well and gratefully Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy are very much up to the plate this is some of the best romantic chemistry I've ever seen and not just because these two work so well together because I mean their chemistry radiates throughout the screen I would be shocked if you watch Before Sunrise and 
not, I would say, six minutes in, you are already smiling. I, I, would, I would be very shocked if you did not take that away from it because these two, they just feel so natural. But what I love the most about their chemistry is just how not movie-like it feels. Nothing about this feels like these two are playing characters. It feels like they're playing real people. It feels like these two are generally falling in love with each other. And you really do feel that here. And the way they're able to not just represent that, but also the way these characters change throughout time um, within the span of just nine years is truly remarkable. There's so little that they're dealing with, um, you know, story-wise. There's so little that they need to do, and they just find ways to really make these characters feel like their own. I mean, take the character of Celine, for example. You know, you start off in Before Sunrise, and she has all these weird like philosophies and things like that and you know she's someone that just has a very interesting way of looking at things and you cut to like before midnight and while she is still the same person her state of mind is far different she's a lot more pessimistic as these films go on and I thought they did a really interesting job of that. And then Jesse is pretty much the internal optimist throughout this entire trilogy for the most part. He's always trying to stay as confident and positive as possible. He always wants their relationship to turn out the best way it can. And sometimes he is being a bit unrealistic, but it just feels so real. And I feel like we've all been in relationships like this where, you know, things might not be going great for us, but we try to stay hopeful. Or you're like Celine, where things aren't going hopeful and you very much show it you but or you're like Jesse where you don't show it as much and I just think their chemistry is so strong here it's truly some of the best I've seen not just in any romance film but I think in any film in general and it's one that truly will never be replicated I just seeing where these characters go from the first to the third film and that's why I think their acting is so strong here that's why I think that these are really the performances of a lifetime and they, those two alone, I think, are enough of a reason to watch this series for sure. But aside from the performances, there's so much else to really love about the series. I mean, just what the whole concept is, when you listen to the premise of this series and you realize that it's really nothing more than just these two characters getting to know each other, it sounds really boring. It doesn't sound particularly interesting, but the way they're able to make this feel so much more intimate and the way they really get us to focus squarely on these two characters uh, really does make up for a far more fulfilling experience because there's not much else like this out there, and it shows that you don't really need a plot to drive a story. You just need really good characters, and gratefully, Jesse and Celine are both excellent characters, and where we end up going with them throughout the course of this series is really great. Like I said, Jesse is someone who's very optimistic, but he also is someone who is far more successful of the two. Without spoiling anything, where he goes in this series, he goes down a very successful path, um, while Celine is kind of the opposite. She isn't really on that side. She's not as financially stable. She's not doing as well job-wise. She's not doing as well love-wise. I mean, there's just, there's a lot that these two are going through, but the thing that brings them together is just their connection. It's something that these two just really understand each other. You get the sense that while there's people going through in their life, it's a lot of negative space. It's a lot of people that they just don't really connect with. But when they're together, they really do feel the most like themselves. They feel like they can fully open up to each other. I think the perfect example of this is one of the first things that Jesse ever asks uh, Celine is a question about her death. And Again, it seems like something that you would ask like when you're very far into a relation, but it shows the kind of connection that these two have. They just are on the same wavelength pretty quickly, and 
I think it's a very good depiction of how awkward a relationship can be at first. You know, when you first meet a person, one of the things you always struggle is like, what do you really say to them? And Jesse really takes that to the extreme. He doesn't just ask her basic questions. He really goes for the hard stuff because he really does want to get to know her. And that's something the series really does understand. It's not just about these two having this desire for each other. Because yes, the sexual feelings are always there, but they really do get to know each other. They really do get to understand who each of them are, and they change each other for the better. And it's a great series that understands that, you know, there are certain people, everyone that comes and goes in our life, you know, that's just kind of how life is. But every person we meet, they have some kind of impact on us, and that's something that the Before Trilogy really does understand. I mean, watching Before Sunrise, when the movie ends, Jesse and Celine are completely different people. They have really changed each other for the better. There are certain choices that they make throughout this series because of them being influenced by the other. But it never feels like this is a negative influence. It always feels like this is something that they're doing because it's the best for them. And I think that's something that the series does so well. And both Before Sunrise and Before Sunset, these ideas are explored really well, that these two really do belong together, but they also have their own separate career paths that they're going on. And you know, for some it's going great and for some it's not. Um, and I, I think they did a really excellent job with that in this trilogy for sure. But something else that I really do want to take note of involving the screenplay is that, as you'll notice as these films go on, the dialogue starts to feel more and more naturalistic, and I really do attribute that to the fact that while Richard Linklater did the screenplay and he did do the ones for the others, Hawk and Delpy also assisted him in doing that. So you could tell that these two got a lot more comfortable in these roles, and the places that they were willing to go, a lot of it felt like it was very much ad -lib. They really wanted this to feel as real as possible. And it very much does feel that way. You feel like you know Jesse and Celine. You feel like you are these characters. I feel like, you know, you'll watch these movies and you will find yourself either being like Jesse or being like Celine. I personally found a lot of similarities in Jesse for myself where anytime something is bothering me, I don't really talk about it. I try to go about things like it's you know, everything's fine. I try to be as positive as I possibly can. However, that can only go on for so long, and eventually it gets to a place where I really do start to feel regret. I really do start to feel like, you know, I've been holding back for far too long, and that's something that Jesse goes through, and I think that's something that Hawk and Delpy just really understood about this trilogy, is that these characters are going to change, but they also don't should not feel like characters. They should feel like real people, and I just really do applaud them for that here, and I think the writing here is just absolutely superb. I, I've gushed about enough, and trust me, I'm going to get into spoilers and things like that, what I think this series did so well, because it's kind of hard to talk about that without getting into spoilers. Um... But the other thing I have to salute is Richard Linklater, because, look, he's one of those directors that I think has very much lost his luster, for sure, but this proves that when he is great, he is one of the best talents working today because he just understands people. He really does. He understands the mundane aspects of life. He isn't trying to go for anything big here. He isn't trying to go for more than it is. And that's something I really appreciate about these films. And yeah, the film will talk about things like the idea of immortality, the idea of regrets, the idea of love, the idea of relationships, the idea of, um, you know, different career paths, the idea of ambition, uh, the idea of depression, you know, it, very deep topics that it hones in on, but Linklater knows that this is really just a movie about two people having this conversation and what that can do, and I think those really are his best best kind of films. That's why Boyhood for me is his best, because again, that's not a film that's anything more than it is. It is quite literally just us seeing this, uh, bo you know, one boy's life and how much it changes throughout uh, the course of, you know, 12 years, and he does something similar with the Before Trilogy, but I think what he accomplishes here is truly remarkable, because unlike Boyhood, 
we don't get to see those gaps in between. You know, the characters have to do that for us. And the way he's able to direct it in such a way where you never feel like you've missed time. You never feel like there was potential that was missing. You can just see the pa the passion that he had into this, how he had a goal throughout this entire thing. And I think it was a very smart idea to do it over the course of nine years because you very quickly realize that this is not just a love story. It really is a story about the three stages of adulthood. The characters start as 20 they're then 30 in the second movie, and they're in their uh, early 40s in the third movie. And I think that was the best place to end it for sure. While I do think that maybe one day he could bring it back, I really don't want him to because I just think what he was able to do here is just nothing short of a huge, huge achievement. And I can't praise him enough for it. And again, I know that he's not that great these days, but I really hope something like Merrily We Roll A Lawn can set him back on the path that he needs to be because... Again, when he is working like this, he is just fucking incredible, and there's very few directors that I feel are able to capture this in the way that Linklater was, and I think that's why we really do need to praise him for it. Again, Hawk and Delpy do a lot of great work too, but Linklater is a big reason why this franchise is as good as it is, and I really do think that this is absolutely some of his best work to date. But another great aspect of this entire trilogy is just the cinematography of it all, which is always a huge highlight. Um, a lot of the scenes that this these films take place in um, are these beautiful landscapes with this just like beautiful scenery and things like that. And it's one of the best parts of the entire trilogy because, again, it feels like such a lived-in environment. They're really trying to make you feel like you're right there with them, and it feels so intimate in that way. And it's not just that oh, the visuals look nice, oh, this was a really beautiful location. It's so much more than that. It just, it feels like it's its own identity in that way. Uh, whether it's them in France in the first movie or when they're, um, you know, on this boat in Paris in the second film or even when they're on vacation um, in Greece in the third film, the... Location is such an important part of this franchise, and uh, it's something that they always delivered on for sure. There's so many just gorgeous shots here that I really could analyze just on their own. There's so many scenes that stuck out to me in that way, and what I love about the most is that there's so many scenes that you would expect them in a regular film to cut. These films rarely do cut um, because they want it to feel like real time. Before Sunset is quite literally real time. The movie's only an hour and 20 minutes, and these two only meet for, in, well, in the movie, an hour and 20 minutes. Um, and I think they did a really excellent job with that for sure. The score here is also just absolutely remarkable, and uh, there's just so much to adore when it comes to this series, uh, technical-wise. I mean, the way it's edited as well, like I said, there's very rarely any cuts. There's so many scenes that go on for a very long time, and again, it's because they want these conversations to feel real. They want these conversations to feel very stretched out. They want these conversations to go on for as long as they possibly can. I would not be surprised if a lot of what Linklater did in these scripts was have them speak freely, because it very much does feel that way, and I mean that in the best way possible. It really does feel the most natural that it could, and it's because of the script, it's because of the directing, it's because of all these elements that really do make this uh, one of the best out there for sure. However, now I really want to get into the spoiler section uh, for the Before Trilogy, which I know a lot of you have seen these films for sure, but for those that haven't, which there are actually a pretty good portion, I'm sure, that haven't, I have a lot of friends that still haven't seen these movies, uh, please go out and watch these films, because I really do think, especially with it being Valentine's Day, these are really the perfect films to watch for sure. Um, I think they are definitely the highest recommendation, and uh, absolutely have become one of my favorites um, for sure. But now we're going to get into spoilers here. So I'm not really going to get into a lot spoiler-wise because, again, there's there's a lot that does go on in these films. There's a lot of conversational-wise that does go on. Um, I'm mainly going to talk about what happens in Before Sunset and Before Midnight. So going into Before Sunset, I think 
the one thing that I was most impressed by with that film is, again, just seeing how much the characters have changed, specifically Jesse. You see that Jesse is someone that, in the first film, he seemed like he was very much free. He felt very liberated in that way. Um, he was really looking for love, and it seemed like him and Celine were going to connect again, but I like the idea that they haven't spoken for nine years. They were going to maybe see each other again, but they didn't for nine years, and since then, they've both had different lives. Uh, you know, Jesse's moved on with this wife that he's clearly not very happy with, and this son that he's having a very hard time to connect to. And Celine, on the other hand, has been in many just uh, very one-note relationships. They're not relationships that she connects very well, and I think she even says that she these just weren't really relationships that she was overall happy in. And Before Sunset leaves you with the impression that these two are right for each other. There's so much that they agree with, there's so much that they do for one another. Um, the fact that Celine even persuades him to miss his flight, um, I think, was such a poignant moment for the series. It really is the moment that shows that these two are going to be together. So to have Before Midnight, I was a little bit worried because uh, I knew that Before Midnight was not going to be these two meeting up. These two were going to be together here, and I was worried that there wasn't going to be as much conflict. But I have to say, that actually ended up becoming my favorite of the entire series. And it's not just because of the fact that it is the final film, and so there's a lot more emotion going on. There's a lot more plot going on in that film. Like, Before Midnight is definitely the most plot-heavy film out of all of these. There's a lot more story going on there for sure, but it's really what that film is about, because no longer it's not a will-they-won't-they they situation. It's these people have been together for a while, but they're at a point where their relationship is getting stale. Their relationship is not as rich and as, you know, unique as it used to be because they've seen a lot more of each other. And the real question is them just taking a second and trying to figure out, was it all worth it? These choices that they've made, were they the right choices for them? You know, this is something that Jesse really contemplates, you know, is he happy that Celine made him stay? Is he happy about the fact that he settled down with her? Could he have possibly connected with his wife? Could he have made something better there? These are questions that he can ponder on forever, but he needs to accept what it is, and I think that's what I really adored about Before Midnight specifically, is that the argument scene between the two really feels like this is going to be the end for them, and in any movie it would be the end for them, and any movie they would like get a divorce or something like that, but I love the fact that this doesn't uh, hurt them. If anything, it actually strengthens them. They realize why they really do care about each other and you know Jesse go when Jesse goes back to having that conversation with her uh the first conversation they had you know about time traveling and things like that and all those different like conspiracy theories uh it just really touches your heart because you realize that even though these two are on very different paths in life and no maybe they have not made the best decisions i mean Celine even says in the movie that she feels like a burden to Jesse rather than someone who is a um you know r rather than someone that is helping him she feels more like you know she's just a burden and she didn't want to be that way he wanted to move to chicago to be closer to his son that's not something that she wanted um so you can see that they have been on separate paths but i think the best part of this film is that it really is about how these two are doing what they can to hold on to those more lively days in their relationship. Remember what made it so great in the first place. And that's the, those conversations that those two had. Something that they, you know, point out in the film, they really have not been able to do. They've been so busy with, you know, uh, their kids and things like that and their lives. They just have not had that time to fully just relax and have these very intimate conversations that have made up the bulk of this trilogy. And 
I think that's what really stuck out to me the most about Before Midnight is that it really turned that idea on its head. It's less of a film about two people that need each other and two people that instead it's two people that already have found each other but are struggling to maintain that deep connection that they have because they're veering off in different directions. And I think the way that things conclude is pretty much perfect. And that fight scene is one that a lot of people I remember talking about when the movie came out. And I think the reason why it's so impactful is that there's really nothing, not just because there's nothing else in the trilogy like it. I mean, the only thing you can really think about is that small little spat they have in the first film. But that's very quick and dumb with. This lingers on for a very long time. It's about a 10-minute scene. It goes on for a very long period of time. Um, and I think the big reason for that is because these are things Things that these characters have felt throughout this entire series. You know, I think Celine has always felt like she was a burden. I think Jesse has always felt like there are things that he's done that Celine is getting in the way of. You know, I think these are not new ideas. I just think that these are things that these two have kept from each other because they have not, one, they have not had the time to really voice it till now, but two, it has not really become an issue. It has not really come to fruition until this very second when they are together, when they have a moment to reflect on everything and realize that there are things that they've made that they are not happy with. And I think that's something that before Midnight in particular, explores very well. And the other two films explored that idea too of are these two people really right for each other? Um, but Before Midnight just really takes it to a new level. And I think that's why that one stuck out to me the most out of the three. And though, like I said, Linklater could maybe one day make a Before Afternoon or something like that, or you know something along those lines, I really don't think I want him to. I really like the way that things end here with us knowing that these two are, even though maybe things aren't the best for them, uh, they just need to keep living. And I think it really stems back to that one quote that uh, one of their friends uh, brings up, the idea of life is just passing through. And yeah, that's very much the case. I mean, things happen in life, but... We need to move on from it. We need to be able to overcome it. We need to realize that in life, um, we are just passing through too many. And uh, it's, that's something that really, I think, sums up their relationship. These two are very important to each other. Um, they're appearing, and then, you know, there's different, there's different directions that they're veering off to. But they also have committed to this relationship, and they're trying to maintain that front. And I just think that whole quote is really just sums up the entire trilogy in that way. And honestly, I could gush about these films more and more if I wanted to, but I think I've pretty much summed it up. The Before Trilogy is not only a fantastic love story, but it's just a great trilogy about adulthood. The 20s where you're young and you're lively and you just feel like you're on top of the world and the world is your oyster in that way. Your 30s when you're a little bit more mature, you're definitely more aware of certain things in your life and you have gone down different paths, but you still do hold out that hope. And then your 40s when you have lived a lot of life and you're realizing some of the choices that you've made and reflecting on whether it really was all worth it in the end. If those things were keeping you from what you really wanted to do, would you have done things differently? You know, when Celine and Jesse ask each other, like, would they have still met up now if they, you know, would they have still ended up together if they met up now? Not when they were young and beautiful looking, not when Celine was 20 and she, you know, if, as she points out in the uh, second film, wasn't as skinny looking, you know, she wasn't as, um, you know, she was just a lot more lively and things like that, a lot more optimistic, would they have still ended up together? These are the questions that these films really do pose, and it just has so much to say about humanity. It has so much to say about what we do in life, why we make certain choices we do, and it just ends up being one of the deepest explorations of adulthood that I think I've ever seen in anything. It's got Richard Linklater working at his fullest potential, two of the best performances from Ethan Hawke and Julie Delpy, and just overall, it's everything that I could possibly want in a trilogy. And guys, I think I've summed it up enough. The Before Trilogy overall absolutely gets an A+. 
plus. Oh my god, it just, it feels so good to have finally watched this trilogy. I really don't know why I put these off for so long. I've had the Criterion since it came out, like back in 2017. You guys can look back. That was like my final, like, Blu-ray update that I did. I don't really do those anymore because I think they're kind of pointless. Um, but that was like my final one that I did. And I've had that since then. I've, I've had the time to watch it since, but I just never got around to it till now. And I'm just so happy that I did. Guys, I really hope you guys have a wonderful Valentine's Day with whatever you're doing, whether it's with your significant other, you know, with friends, whatever the way you guys celebrate, definitely do that. Um, in terms of movies coming out this week, there's not much out that's really good. I've already seen two releases. I'm going to review them uh, later today um, or tomorrow. I'm not entirely sure. But if you really need a good trilogy, I would very much recommend these. I mean, you could put any of these on, and I think you're going to get something out of them. I think it's going to make an impact on you, and I think it's the kind of uh, it, it's the kind of romantic films that we just don't see enough of, and. I truly can't recommend them enough, but either way, guys, in my review of the Before Trilogy, if you guys have seen these films before, let me know what you guys think of them, love to your thoughts on them. Also, in terms of ranking, because I didn't really talk about that, uh, for me, I would go Before Midnight, Before Sunrise, and then Before Sunset. Uh, all of them are pretty much... Uh, perfect to near perfect in my opinion there i really don't have many flaws with this trilogy at all as i already touched upon uh, but that's really it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it we'll see you guys in my next video and we'll see you guys for that okay bye